Anyway, nothing interesting of interest showed up here, so I didn't get to use my magical method that was pointed out to me in the comments and also sort of cryptically on Cerebi, and I didn't realize what it meant until I tried it for myself. Also, the reason Jinx was in there is because basically the way to make sure you catch Pokemon is hit them a lot, a lot, a lot, and then go away and let them heal if you don't get them wobbly, and then hit them with a strong attack after they start wobbling. And my good friend Topmon Hit suggested using a low-level Pokemon with a status move, which was that Jinx had Lovely Kiss on Icy Wind, which was good enough because there's like increased chance of wobbling when you're status conflicted or something, or maybe just catching if it's not already wild. I don't know. But another good way is to use Endeavor, which brings the opponent's HP down to your own, or um, I want to go back to using Mewtwo. Yeah, it brings your opponent's HP down to your own, or uh, it does one damage if it's already your own or lower, which basically means you get to use it forever, and I, like, spent friggin' forever trying to get False Swipe onto this, uh, what's it called, Glade, because I thought that would be good, and while it technically works, it's really a lot more hassle than Endeavor, because, I mean, it can't kill them by accident like Endeavor might if you're, like, really, really horrendously unlucky, but... Endeavor is just pretty much the best, and hopefully I'll be able to show that off, even though it'll be really sodding boring to watch. And oh, hey, Magnemites. Oh, yeah, this game made me start hating Magnezone because they're so common, they look dumb. Or, they don't look dumb, really, but they look dumb in this game because it's dumb cell Pokemon. I hope they remake it with good graphics. It isn't an artistic style, it's just bad graphics, and I hate it. Well, actually, um, while ironically mocking people who dislike interesting Zelda games is all fun and good, this actually is bad graphics. I don't think anyone could really legitimately call this an artistic style. It's a style that does not take up very much space, and it serves its purpose considering how much has to be going on on screen at once, but it does not benefit very detailed Pokemon like Magnazone very well. It makes them look like stupid stupid things. I don't even know why I'm attacking stuff. I'm really just looking for Hitmon Lee. Oh well, sometimes they appear in pairs, right? I mean, the dinosaurs which all but replace them in the another rank sometimes appear in pairs of dinosaurs. And also, I'm sort of looking in all of these for the Sinnoh Legendary Trio, which you can't get through wackies like you can the um, Kanto. Which is annoying because I really care little to nothing about the stupid legendary pixies or whatever they're called because they're so boring. They're all the same thing with like minor changes to make them look like a respected character of the Sonic team, or maybe only Me Spirit looks like Knuckles, but that's still what I thought of immediately and will always think of that and the fact that they're really, 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 really boring. Yeah, it's sort of weird. Um, the Odd no or the yeah, the even numbered Pokemon games always have boring legendary trios. It's really weird. First gen had the birds, all of them had their own sub dungeon, while well, Moltres was in Victory Road. Uh feels weird reusing complaining in Let's Plays. Because I was saying this in the Skype conference earlier today and or like I'm testing out my complaining on other people to see how they think of it. And naturally it is all very good and reasonable. Why am I not using Aura Sphere on the things that are weak to Aura Sphere? I just probably because Psycho Cutter is so fun. But um, what am I saying? Uh, words probably. Yeah, first gen had the legendary birds. Each of them had their own little cave or not cave uh, dungeon, which is pretty cool. Except for Moltres, which actually does in uh. Fire Red and Leaf Green, and I forget if it doesn't Heart Gold and Soul Silver. It might. I don't actually think it does. I don't know. Second Gen. Dogs, which are all basically the same. Oh, I can't really say basically the same means they're bad because all of them are very similar. All four Gens, but. I think the fact that they're all Psychic type really ruins the Sinnoh trio for me, but. Yeah, second gen had some beasts, which made everyone call them dogs, which is annoying because they have more attributes like big cats and also different attributes of big dogs and really just sort of like 
legendary things that look sort of mammalian quadrupeds without having very much specifics put in them. But no, dogs are cool because they can be a kawaii wooferu or something, right? Anyway, why am I fighting this? This is stupid and not a boss. Um... Apparently hitting them while they're steaming like that gives you a better chance of wobbling them or something. I don't know. I re I've been reading a lot of stuff about this game. I'm not sure how much of it is just speculation, how much of it is actually how it works and whoops. Go, Magneton! Use Sony Boom! Yeah! Why is this Magneton so weak? Just because that's first level stuff. Magneton was good back in the day before I had a Magnezone, but um. That's what I was like complaining. Okay, yeah, legendary dogs, stupid and boring, everyone hates them. Or at least I sort of dislike them. Reggie's really, really great and had like the most convoluted and confusing cool puzzle ever to get to them. I don't know, that might just. Okay, I need a Jigglypuff and a Scyther. Both of them live in here. I actually need like Pinsir and every friggin' giant bug, but. I think I have Roserade, but I needed them for a while, but I'm pretty sure I've gotten them since then. Either way, I have one now, and yeah, I already had them. I like how I said yeah just before I actually picked up. Yep, but yeah, the Reggies, all of them were like friggin' deviously hidden. You had to like get a friggin' Waylord with ancient power in the last spot of your team and a Relic Camp with Dive in the first spot and go to a really obscure dive location and freaking figure out braille code and then the caves opened up and they had really weird puzzles in them like you had to stand in a random tile and use a HM that opened up the door and then they were just hard to catch too which really isn't anything special because everything that rare has a pretty much the same catch rate but uh I just really thought they were pretty cool and because I'm a dumb robot liker guy I like them because they're weird cool golem things. And then fourth gen, it had a really annoying campy backstory that sounded like rehash of third gen story. I was like, oh, there's a Pokemon that made the land and we should use it to make a new land for Team Boring that isn't Team Rocket. Um, I'm sorry I get a little bit emotional about this. Anyway, yeah, stupid thing, Arceus, the totally first Pokemon, it's not like Mew is the first Pokemon canonically, and it's better than Arceus, anyway. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, Arceus pooped out Dialga and Palkia, and Giratina just sort of showed up, I think, and then the dumb legendary trio showed up, because they're all stupid and dumb. That That's the key, if you get one thing out of that backstory, it's that every part of it is stupid and dumb. But yeah, they're stupid and dumb and don't have interesting stories, and to catch them, you beat the main plot of the game, and then they are found in three caves that are plot points of their story. They're not even sort of hidden like everything else except the running dogs were, which are also almost as bad. And then, what? I don't even know what happens after that. One of them starts running away because that was totally a fun mechanic two generations ago. They just pissed me off and now they're like really rare and I don't want to look for them and they show up in the EX ranks. I almost call them conferences. Battle Royales for some reason. Anyway, I'll show you how good the Shaman is, I guess. Sort of made myself angry now on the basis that I'm going to have to do more grinding for really rare things when I thought I was basically done with it. Because, of course, they're legendary, so you're gonna have to do it all. I feel like I should have done my grinding for regular Pokemon in the EX rank now, just to have a chance of finding them, but... That's stupid. It was hard enough to find a Glaceon when it was one of 13 Pokemon. I don't want to see, like, a... Uh, just upsetting me. Why can't they, like, just be the bosses or something? That would be cool. Like, the boss of one thing is Mesprit, the boss of the second thing is Uxie, the boss of the third thing is Rampardos, the boss of the fourth thing is, uh, Darkrai, the boss of the fifth thing is Shaman, the boss of the sixth thing is, uh, what's it called, uh, Water-type Mew, uh, Manaphy. So, um, 
Wait, I think a long time ago I was talking about how I traded a bunch of uh, Mothims and got another, or I was trying to start talking about how I was trading a bunch of Mothims in hopes of getting a Mirror Cloak for me, and instead of getting a Mirror Cloak for me, I got a not Mirror Cloak for me, and it was totally interesting, and I'll have to grind for more Mothims or hope the five or so I already have are good enough to get me a Mirror one, because I'm gonna go for all forms if I gonna go for a Pokedex run. It's not a lot of extra effort. The hard part is getting things that spawn rarely, and despite the fact that Eeveelutions make up a decent chunk of those, and they make up most of Rotom's forms, it's not really that bad on top of everything else I'm already doing.